Overhead traveling and gantry cranes are used daily to move trucks, wheels, diesel engines, cars, engineering services equipment, and other machinery that can often weigh thousands of pounds. Obviously, when moving such cumbersome and heavy loads, safety is the major concern. Increased safety is achieved through the use of pennant cable or radio remote control of these cranes. The radio remote control increases efficiency and promotes better handling methods. It allows the designated employees to advantageously position themselves while moving loads and at the same time free him from having to rely on the signals from other workers that may be subject to misinterpretation. The sole responsibility for the safe and efficient operation of these radio control cranes lies with the operator of the remote control device. The crane is handling a lot of weight and that load has to be kept under control at all times. It has to be as safe in the air as it is on the ground. You also have to be in good physical condition with good reaction time and adequate vision and hearing. If you take any prescription drugs, check to make sure that they will not affect your alertness, vision, hearing, or balance. This precaution applies to over-the-counter remedies as well. The purpose of this program is to show you, as an operator, how to safely operate a crane using a pennant cable or radio remote controls. The key component to the operation of a radio controlled crane is the transmitter. The transmitter is a sophisticated and expensive piece of electronic equipment that requires certain care. It costs over $3,000 to replace one of these units should it become damaged, not to mention the downtime for the crane. It is your responsibility to ensure that none of its electronic circuits are damaged. For example, don't place the transmitter on something that moves or where it could fall or on the floor where tools or other material could fall on it, or in an area where it can come in contact with water and other liquids. The first thing you have to do at the start of the shift is make certain the number on the transmitter and the crane match, and that you have the only operating controller. Also make sure that you know where the electrical cutout switch is for your crane. Then install the battery that provides the power for the transmitter. Make sure that the control switches are in the centered position. Then Turn on the key on the left-hand side of the transmitter case to the on position and press the battery test button. When the button is pressed, the red warning light should come on to indicate that the battery is fully charged. Next, put the transmitter on by snapping one harness around your neck and the other around your waist. It is important that you wear the harness to protect the transmitter from accidental damage and to allow you to have both hands free. To ensure that the transmitter is properly working, move the guard switch located on the far right of the transmitter case to the on position. Wait three to five seconds and depress the reset button. The horn will sound that indicates both the transmitter and the receiver are working properly. As the operator, you have the ultimate responsibility for the safety of the lift. The first thing you should do at the beginning of each shift, or before you use the crane for the first time that day, is a daily walk around and operational check. This general inspection shouldn't take more than a few minutes, but never underestimate its importance. Certain checks must now be made to ensure that the crane is in proper operating condition. First, visually inspect the crane for any loose or damaged parts that may cause a malfunction. The pendant control box, pendant cable, and pendant control box support chain must be inspected and be in good condition. Bare wires or the cable supporting the control box are not acceptable. Run the hoist rope out enough to see if there is any visible damage, paying special attention to parts of the cable or rope to get extra wear. Check hooks and latches for cracks, distortions, or corrosion. And make sure that the hook swivels on the block. 
Also, make sure the safety latches are working properly on hooks and items that were originally equipped with latches. Inspect the wire rope and revving system and the directional markings on the controller and the crane. One of the most important checks is to make sure that the hoist upper limit switch is working correctly. Inch the block into the limit to be sure that the switch will stop the hoist block when it reaches the upper limit. Then do a second check by running the block into the limit at a slow speed. The hoist should stop moving up and shut itself off after making contact with the switch. The limit switch is only a safety device and should not be used to brake during normal operations. Move and then stop both the bridge and the trolley to check that the brakes on each are working properly. Any defects found during your inspection should be noted on form 20846. Then notify your supervisor who must take the crane out of service until the problem is corrected. Once all these checks have been made and you have inspected the slings and rigging you are going to use, you're ready to begin making lifts with the crane. When making a lift, certain procedures must be followed. Operation of a crane is a fully focused job. If you have to talk to someone or turn to look at something else, stop the crane until you can give it your full attention again. Before lifting any loads, check to ensure that there are no tools or materials left on the load that could fall and cause injury. The hoist must be centered over the load. If it isn't centered, the load will swing when it's lifted. When making a lift, move the hoist lever evenly to lift smoothly and avoid any jerking or swinging of the load. One of the basic rules for safe crane operation is to never make any fast or sudden moves. All moves should be made smooth without any sudden acceleration or deceleration. Here's why. This weight is being lifted slowly by a thin piece of thread and the thread holds. But look what happens if you try and lift the same weight quickly. The thread breaks. So you must be sure that all of the slack is out of the sling or hoisting ropes or chains before you actually lift the load off the ground. Then if the crane has multiple speeds, start the hoist very slowly. But don't stay in the slower speeds for more than a few seconds. Move the controller handle or push button step by step until the fastest safe speed is reached. Also, check the area in which the load will be moved for people, objects in the way, and other cranes. A load should never be moved over personnel. All people in the vicinity must be warned by sounding the horn when you're about to move a load. The crane should not be used to pull or drag a load. Pulling or lifting at an angle could cause damage to the trolley and bridge by placing extra stress on the wheels, bearings, and other component parts. Keep the load as low as possible while traveling with it. Never work on a load that is suspended on a crane. Don't weld any material that's attached to the crane with cables. The welding current can travel along the cables and damage the receiver mounted on the crane. Also, stray ground current can cause gear and bearing damage to the crane. There are also some important procedures to follow for leaving the crane. And one thing you should always remember is that you must not leave the controls while the load is suspended. Always lower the hoist before you leave the controls. Reduce the speed gradually until the load is almost in place. Then proceed at the slowest speed possible. You must always have at least two full wraps of rope left on the hoist drum when the load is at the lowest point. With less, the rope might unwrap from the drum causing the load to fall. If the load is rigged with a basket or choker hitch, do not use the crane to pull the sling out from underneath it. It's just too easy for the end of the sling to catch the load and turn it over. Always remove the sling from the hook and pull it out from under the load by hand. Then, whatever kind of sling you use, always store them where they can be protected from damage. 
Don't leave slings or any other hardware hanging on the hook of the crane. Before you leave the crane, raise the hook to just below the limit switch to make sure that it's out of the way of people and vehicles that might pass below it. The transmitter should always be shut off, battery removed, and returned to the designated area when the crane isn't going to be used for an extended period of time. This will ensure that the controls aren't accidentally bumped, which could result in serious injury to yourself and others. The radio-controlled crane is a safe and efficient means of moving extremely heavy loads from one place to another. It's up to you, the operator of the crane, to ensure that all of the safety precautions and proper operating procedures are followed. There is just too much at stake. This video produced by Union Pacific Railroad, Salt Lake Diesel Shop.